everybody, this is Praxis, and I'm back on site today. My dad's here, he's helping with electrical work. If you look above you, we've got uh, all these box beams in that are running uh, wires to various places. Uh, there's going to be two lamps here to illuminate the library area. There's a smoke detector here, they all have their own circuits. My dad's got them all labeled. Uh, also, just got this on, it's the opposing railing on the other side of. Uh, you know, the, uh, the stairs that come up to the second floor here. And this one has switches in it. This one uh, was just, just a railing, and this one needed to have some switches. The, uh, this, is, uh, this box here is part of the uh, six-way switch, where we have uh, switches at the top and bottom of all the stairs, and a bedroom over there for turning lights on in this column. Uh, that's what this is for. And on the other side, uh, just offset slightly, uh, this one's kind of high, the other one's kind of low. Uh, this is, what is this for? I, I guess this one runs these, these lights over here, and I think that's it. Yeah, just a switch for these guys over here, and um, there's some power that's feeding through this one over to there. Um, oh, and also over here. I finished up the whole underbelly of the stairs the other day, and uh, it came out pretty sharp. Uh, everything lined up really nicely, so I was pleased with that. What I wanted to talk about today was uh, the electrician popped by. We had a question for him about the capacity of boxes. There are uh, specific rules about how many wires you can have going into these uh, boxes, and uh, you know, in terms of space. Uh, you know, different gauge wire is a little bit thicker, uh, different types of switches, uh, you know, a GFCI outlet is not the same size as a regular, you know, wall flip switch, and which is not the same size as a, a regular wall outlet. Uh, so there's all uh, sorts of math that goes into figuring out how much you can put into the, these boxes. My dad had looked up the regulations and he did the math and he found out that some of these boxes, technically speaking, were a little bit on the small side. Um, but that said, in the real world, in reality, you know, this is no big deal, just running to a, a you know, wall switch. So uh, because of that schism between the reality of, you know, gosh, there's actually plenty of room in that box uh, versus the math that says, oh, you know, you actually, you can't fit that much in that box. You need to get an even bigger electrical box, which is a problem here when you get them like up against each other. Uh, because of that schism between reality and uh, the way things were on paper, we gave the electrician a call and just said, okay, you know, this is what the, the codes and the math are saying. Like, how real are they about this when they actually do the inspections? And he was in the area, he popped by, and, uh, you know, we could talk about a lot of things. And that was one of them. And he let us know that that is something, it's like there's the rules, there's the book. And it really depends on what um, electrical inspector you have, but he said the one in this area, he's like, you know, he's not going to beat you up over that. It's like, as long as you uh, put things together in a way where you're not having to like jam stuff in and things clearly fit, that's going to be fine with people. And that's important to keep in mind that, uh, you know, just because uh, rules are written on paper, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're always being followed in whatever area you're in. So, but it's important to know because in some areas, I'm sure there are building inspectors that are, you know, calculating the cubic volume of each of the boxes and making sure that you follow the rules to the letter. So I just mentioned that so that if you can get guidance of somebody who has been working in the area and does know the local inspector, our local inspector, I guess his big thing is grounding. He wants to make sure that everything is properly grounded, which is I have no, no problems with that. Having a properly grounded system is a good safety. Um, so uh, knowing kind of what is important to the, each inspector in, uh, in each area can be important. So for things like this where uh, the math on paper suggested there was a problem, but in the real world is not actually a problem, you know which of those things you can kind of ignore and like just go with like what's actually workable in the real world versus worrying about fantasy problems that don't actually exist anywhere except on paper. That's it. Thanks for watching.